Jesus was, but he couldn't. The word says because there was a crowd in front of him, and he was short in stature. Some of us can't see Jesus today because there are distractions. Some of us have distractions in our life. Some of us have voices speaking to us. But the voice that we're hearing is contrary to the Lord. <coughs> Some of us have other distractions. Maybe it's friends. Maybe it's people that we're around. And that is causing us not to see the Lord. Speech. We're not seeing what Jesus has for us because we are distracted. We are not able to die to what he wants us to die to because we are distracted. There's a door of destiny in front of us, but we can't reach that door because we are distracted. So what did Zacchaeus do? There was a crown in front of Zacchaeus. He was short. So he climbed up the sycamore tree. So when I was preparing this message, I was saying, Lord, there's something about the sycamore tree. Why was it a sycamore tree? As we know, when we read the Word of God, there's a purpose for everything that's inside the Scripture. And I started, I started researching, because the Lord started telling me, I want you to search. What was the sycamore tree? So this particular sycamore tree that Zacchaeus climbed was said to be dated back to over 2,000 years old. Particularly, the sycamore tree is a tree that can reach from anywhere to 30 to 80 feet high and 50 feet wide. It was actually a sycamore fig tree that produced figs. So as I was reading this and researching, I was saying, well, okay, what does this all mean? <laughs> then the Lord told me, it wasn't just a tree. But it was the tree that was in the garden. Yeah. I don't know if we heard that. It was the tree that was in the garden. It was the tree that once possessed the fruit that we as humans were never supposed to touch. It was a tree that brought creation into sin from disobedience. It was a tree that once held great power, but then became dead through sin. And as the Lord was telling me this, my mind was exploding. I said, Lord, wow. Jesus knew what Zacchaeus was doing when he climbed that certain orchard. See, Zacchaeus, we look at his life, he was a sinner. He was an ultimate sinner. But he knew something, that the only way that he could get out of his life of sin, out of death, was to find life. The only way tonight, and I'm praying that the Holy Spirit reveals this revelation to us, the only way that we can get out of our life of death tonight is by finding life in Christ. Amen. Amen. The only way that we can leave the life that is disobedient to Christ and going against His will is if we are able to climb that sycamore tree of our life. Hallelujah. 
Or is the Lord? But are we willing? Are we willing to do what Zacchaeus did? Are we willing to die to all that we are and everything that we know for us to see Jesus? Jesus is here tonight. But it didn't just stop there. It wasn't enough that Zacchaeus was able to see Jesus. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Come quickly, I must go in your house. I must dwell inside of your life. It's not enough for us, for us tonight to have Jesus in our life. It's not enough for us tonight to know our calling and our giftings of God. But we need the Holy Spirit of Christ to live inside of us. It's not enough for us to just go to church or say, well, I've done my duty. I went to Sunday service or I went to home church. But I'll stop right there. I won't go further. This is the kind of Christian I'm going to be. Everything else they already know, I won't give to you. I don't know who the Lord is speaking to tonight. But it requires for us to die. Goodbye, world. I stay along with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay along with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Hallelujah. That's what Zacchaeus did that day when he decided to climb the second porch. He said, Lord, I know I'm a tax collector. Lord, I know I've done such bad, but I just need you, Jesus. The Lord is speaking to us tonight, some of us. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what situation you're facing right now. It doesn't matter what struggle you've had over and over again, as long as you're willing, you're willing to have Jesus enter into your life, that's what matters. As long as you're willing to let go of the life that you live now, so God can take you from That's what matters. So Jesus said to Zacchaeus, it's not enough that you see me, but I need to come quickly. I must dwell inside your house. And you see, here's the amazing part. Once this happened, people started to question. People started to question, what, what is going on? Why is Jesus dwelling inside the house of a tax collector? I don't know if you got that. Why is Jesus want to dwell inside the house of an ultimate sinner? I'm just paraphrasing. You might think tonight, Jesus, everything that I've done, why would you want to come into my life? Why would you want to dwell inside every part of my life? I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. There's too much shame in my life. There's too much guilt. I've done too much wrong. There's no way that I can come back from what I am. But the Lord was saying, well, it doesn't matter. As long as you're willing to die, as long as you're willing to give up yourself, I can come and live inside you. 
Because there's a reason, you see. There's a reason that Jesus wants to live inside our life. Because it will glorify the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. It will glorify the name of Jesus when we allow Christ to live inside of our life. But when Jesus doesn't have full control of our life, his glory is not allowed to be revealed and shown. Because then you see after in the scripture, Zacchaeus was so excited. He said, Lord, I will give back everything that I took. I will return it all back. And then what did, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, to your house has come salvation. That's what Jesus said. See, that's what this is all about. It's all about salvation. It's all about people knowing Jesus. You know, I was at work just this last week, and the Lord is showing me the same message. Most people know I'm very bold and crazy. I look like I'm crazy. On the back of my airport vest, I have scripture. Because the Lord told me, I want you to put this specific scripture on the back of your vest. And I said, Lord, you know this can be fire, right? I'm like, it's okay. I'm covering you in my favor. And he told me to put on there Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that seems right unto man, but that way will eventually be I said, wow, Lord, any scripture, you tell me to put this one on the back of my list. Just put a target on the back of it. So it was interesting. I was working, and it was uh, the first time ever this happened in my life. Two seat people came up to me because they always saw me reading my Bible in the lunchroom. And then they came up to me and they said, hey, we always, we're just wondering, you know, why are you Christian? You're always reading your Bible. And so then when they said that, I was, I was asking the Lord, okay, how do I respond to them? What do I say to them? And then I said, I want to, I'm curious to know, why are you asking that question? And they said to me, recently we've been seeing a lot of Sikhs coming to Jesus. And I said, wow, Lord, this is amazing. Right in the middle of my workplace, you're allowing me to preach the gospel to these seats. But going past that far now, you see, when the glory of God is being revealed and Jesus' name is being glorified, there's someone who's not happy. There's someone who is not happy about your life in Christ. And I was, for a little bit, I was, I was, I would say I heard a slumber. I was, uh, I had to prepare for the word, and the Lord told me, okay, after you're done what you're doing, I need you to read the word. And then these, these Sikh people that always play cards, they drew me in, and I started playing cards. And then as I, as I left work that day, I felt a piercing in my back. And I felt my spirit all of a sudden very, I was talking to Rodrigo, you know, I was feeling very tired and drowsy, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. Something is going on. And then the Lord showed me. He said, you lost your guard. You put your guard down. The enemy is on to you. And he sent a spirit over to distract. Well, why am I sharing that? And I just, I sense it's just uh, tonight, there was a big spirit of distraction in our lives that is not allowing us to see the Lord in our lives. It's not allowing Jesus to live inside of us. But we need to overcome that spirit by dying. We need to die tonight. We need to die to our flesh. 
would re be renewed in Christ. Because what God has for us, what he has for GT, and every single person here, is too big. It's so big that the enemy would do whatever he can to destroy it. Praise the Lord. I believe this is what the Lord is saying to us tonight. That in order for us to die to our flesh, we have to be like Zacchaeus. We have to climb the tree of our lives so we can see Jesus. We have to let go of our flesh. We have to let go of the things that we desire so the Lord can have full control. Like, past, like Apostle Ali has been preaching, this is a time where if we miss the glory of God, we will miss what God has for us. It is about salvation in the end. What the Lord is speaking to us tonight is about salvation. It is about the souls that need Jesus. It's not about us. If we truly believe in this hour in the Lord and we allow him to do what he needs to do, we will begin to see the marvelous thing that he has in our lives. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, the things that God has for those who love him. The Lord is getting ready, if we allow him in this hour and season, to use the parts of hell in our lives. I don't know about you, what you're going through, but there's definitely a hell that I'm going through in my life right now. But Jesus is greater. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a hell that wants to stop you, but Jesus is greater. Yes. There's a bunch of garbage going on in your life. There's a bunch of nonsense, but Jesus is greater. Yes. There are distractions that want to take you under, but Jesus is greater. Amen. We need to overcome these parts of hell in our lives so we can revive the dead souls in Christ. Where God has placed us right now, each and every single one of us, there is a mission. There are souls there that need Jesus. But if we let, if we let our flesh come in, we will miss what God wants to we will miss it, and we will regret it. Yes. So I pray that we heed to what the Holy Spirit is saying to them. That we will lay it all here at the altar tonight. That we will let go. That we will give it up to the Lord. And allow Him to do what He wants to do tonight. I'm just going to turn it over to Brother Eric now. Oh, sorry. I have a song. <laughs> sorry. And there's a song that I just want us to listen to. Allow the Holy Spirit to just minister to us through this song. Yeah. 
at the rain, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind, heaven strong to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt.
So Jesus commanded Zacchaeus to make haste and come down from the sycamore tree. And then it is recorded that Zacchaeus responded to that and he made haste and did it joyfully. But the people around him said, they complained that how come he's a sinner? And let me read it. He has gone to be a, to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. So these were the destructors. They knew Zacchaeus as a sinner and they made all, they made these comments. But what was the response of Zacchaeus to these comments? He returned what he had stolen. In verse 8, it says, Zacchaeus stood and, and, and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. My point is, when the Lord called Zacchaeus to make haste, he responded in haste. When we hear the call of the Lord, do we respond in haste to him? Or do we dilly dally? Or we, we make him less of a priority in our lives because there are other um, uh, priorities in our, in our lives. It can be work, it can be our spouse, it can be our children, it can be school, it can be anything else. But Zacchaeus, who is a well-known tax collector who probably became rich because of overcharging people or, or maybe he uh, stole from you know from from, from the purse of of, uh, of of the government when he collected the taxes but when he saw jesus he was so excited to see jesus although he was a short man in stature he made the effort to climb the sycamore tree and he responded in haze in our lives today when we hear the call of christ Whatever it may be, it may be in the exercise of our gifting. It may be in, you know, the Lord wants us to serve in this church. In whatever capacity we are called, you can be called to be an usher. You can be called to uh, set up the chairs or take down the chairs later on. Whatever it may be, do we make haste or do we hesitate? Is there any other priority in our lives? It is my prayer that we will respond like Zacchaeus did. When the Lord, when we hear the call of the Lord to make haste, we should always make haste because we know that the time is short and it is even shorter. So when we hear the Lord, I believe that all of us here and even the ones listening online, we all hear the voice of the Lord. Amen. Because if you don't hear the voice of the Lord, there is something wrong, right? So when we hear the voice of the Lord, whatever he is calling us to do or whatever he's telling us to do, we have to make haste and not entertain any doubt in our hearts that we are actually hearing from the Lord. And if you're called to do something, do it with haste because it may mean life and death for someone. It may mean a blessing or, or for someone. And if we do not make haste, we may be robbing someone of the blessing that the Lord intends for that person to be given by us or through us. So this is a, a very uh, timely message that Brother Vic shared with us tonight because the call is urgent in this day and time. It is very urgent. So whatever the Lord has called each one of us individually and collectively as a family, as the Gospel Tabernacle family, we have to respond in case. There may not be tomorrow for us. There may not be tomorrow for the person that we are meant to bless with whatever the Lord is asking us to do. So we are paying attention because the Lord repeated the word make haste and he responded in haste. So there is, there is a... Uh, if I can call it a method, Jesus said, come in haste, and he did. Zacchaeus came in haste and with joy in his heart, because he said joyfully. So when we respond, we respond in haste, and we respond with joy in our hearts, not grudgingly, not in complaint, right? Because we all have to serve the Lord with joy and with gladness in our hearts, and not wait for the next person to do what, and oh, maybe the Lord will speak to my brother or my sister to do the same thing. No, because we are called individually. And when we respond to that call individually, 
we are we are responding also corporately because there are things that need to be achieved by the body of Christ by gospel tabernacle. It was mentioned by Brother Vic, we are called to greater things, but each one of us has to do our own uh, what God has called us to do in order to fulfill that greater thing that God has for gospel tabernacle. Are we ready to make haste in responding to that call? And are we ready to respond with joy in our hearts? I believe that is the question for tonight. Are we ready to make haste when you hear the voice of the Lord calling you to do something? And are you going to do it joyfully or grudgingly or with complaints in your heart? I pray it would be the former than the latter, that we would respond speedily and quickly and with joy, over, over abundance of joy in our hearts. Amen? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, I just want to quickly share. I I I, I can't wait to praise you up uh, to to hear, but and I want to bring it back. I believe I um, sister Elsa is going to tie into everything, and, and I believe we need to respond with haste in what God has for us today. You know, you look at you look at what Vic was talking about the distraction. <laughs> Is really the distraction just about our situation? About about how how is, is there just hardships? If you look in the Bible, it talked about the crowd. And what Vic was uh, Brother Vic was describing as a distraction was the crowd itself. And can I be honest? He was short. Uh, Zacchaeus was short. He was short in stature. So he climbed up the sycamore tree because he couldn't see further than the crowd. And he was distracted by the crowd because he couldn't even see Jesus. Can I put it this way that we often look at the crowd before we look at Jesus? What's going on over there? I see people. So I'm just going to follow the people. I'm going to be with the people. Eventually, I might see what's happening. But I see people right now. There must be something good going on. Or there must be something very entertaining going on. But we aren't called to follow people. We aren't called to crowds. Jesus has already said that there will be a division within the church. Yeah. There will be a division from the goats and the sheep. There will be Christians putting Christians to death. We will have people, you know, the Christianity might seem so big with many churches and many people, but it's not about the people and how big an organization is. And I want to push you guys to, to tonight to think about for yourself. Put yourself in Zacchaeus' shoes. Because that day, when Jesus was passing through Jericho, it was not for the crowd. He passed through for Zacchaeus. Yeah, yeah. And Zacchaeus alone. Yeah, yeah. That day was a day of salvation for Zacchaeus alone. Yeah. And if we follow the crowd, would Zacchaeus be saved that day? Would his household be saved that day? No. No, no. no. He, he made an effort because he, he knew that this was for himself. And I want to bring it back again to the story of the, the chickens and the eagles. <coughs> Christians are putting each other together. They, they think there's power in unity and all these things. But really, Jesus is the only one that can bring us higher, that can take us from glory to glory. And chickens often huddle together. They, they go in crowds and, and they eat together. They, they, they lay eggs together. <laughs> and they, they do whatever they want together. They, 
they stick together, but eagles don't. Eagles soar alone and high, and, and they do their own things high. And I believe the sycamore tree was a description of where God wants us to be. In the high places. In the high places where we can see Him and not the crowd. That we can oversee the distraction in our lives. That we can oversee what the enemy is doing. And see what Jesus is really doing over there. Because these crowds, there are so many people. They hear, oh, Jesus is probably saying this. Oh, maybe he's saying this. Oh, maybe he's saying this. And then once the message, the, the, the game of telephone passes back to the crowd, the whole message is different. And oftentimes, that's what it works in, in Christianity, eh? The healing happened there in Africa. Then we tell it to stories here, and then we keep telling more and more and more. Sometimes the story changes, sometimes it doesn't, but we don't see Jesus. We hear good things. We hear miracles, but we don't see miracles. Zacchaeus was not, was not satisfied with that. So he climbed up the sycamore tree. He went higher. He says, he says, I have to see Jesus for myself. For myself. Because we were born to have an individualistic relationship with Christ alone. And you know what's beautiful about the body of Christ? You know what's beautiful about it? It's that there's different parts. I can tell you this right now. I got this image in my head. It's a, not a good image. But think of a think of me. Look at me right now. Okay? Imagine if I have a 12-year-old hand and a 16-year-old's legs. I look like a freak. And I won't be able to walk. I won't be able to do things correctly. Let, let's be honest. I, I, I'd be like, you know, I just like, I wouldn't be able to operate normally. But that's the body of Christ these days, isn't it? We, we, we have these hands, these bodies working well, but the hands and the feet aren't doing much. And some of the churches these days, they have no feet. They don't dare to share the gospel. What does the Bible say? How beautiful are the feet of those who carry the gospel. Amen. Amen. And they be... They'd be wobbling down the street. They couldn't move the church. So that's why the church is stationary. They can't impact the world because they have no feet. Praise the Lord. They have no feet. They can't take the gospel elsewhere. Because they created the church to be stationary. They got all these big hands working, but where are the feet? Where are the messengers? Where are the carrier of the gospel? God needs individuals who is perfect in their gifts. God, don't need chicken sticking together. Actually, did Jesus need the crowd? No, he needed the 12 disciples who knew, exa who knew exactly what they were doing. Jesus needed the 12 disciples. He didn't need the 300, 400, 3,000 people. He didn't need them. The 12 disciples brought the message and spread it to the world. Man, can I be real with you? When we look to Jesus, if we look at people around us, And we're in the wrong place. And we say, oh, my, my brother's still struggling with this. <laughs> I'm good. Now, at least I show up twice to church. No, at least I show up. My brother over there don't even show up to church. At least I serve on the praise team. But the, let's be honest. If you serve on a praise team, that means you have to show up. And sometimes you don't want to show up, but you have to show up. 
And sometimes it's not a, it's not a want, it's a, it's just I have to. It's an obligation. And I understand people go through seasons, they need to come to church, they need to force themselves to go to church, and it's okay. But can we stop looking at other people? And can we be real with ourselves at this moment? Are we climbing up the street? Are we going to the high places seeking for Jesus? Or are we distracted with the crowds? Are we looking at people around us and, and trying to determine if we're close to Jesus by the crowd? If I'm that close to Jesus, you know I'm close. Look, at least I'm close. If, if Rodrigo is Columbia Jesus, okay? I'll tell you, if crowds surrounding him because he's too handsome, wow! I'm closer to him than Shirley is. I'm closer to him than all boys. Then it stopped being about Jesus. It started becoming about Omo. Surely. It started becoming about them. And not about ourselves. Your relationship with Jesus is with Jesus. No one else, no one else can take that away. It's all our choice. That's why it's so, it's such a prevalent message at this moment. Because God is building this church. And I love it. We, we work together. We did. We still work together. For the past three years, we work together as a church. We work well. Okay? Me and Emery, we, we get along well. <laughs> me and Emery, we get along well. We, we work together. We work. Everything worked. But that is not enough anymore. Because God's building His church. And his church has a body. And his church has a body with different parts, different anointings, yes. different giftings. And if we don't all rise up, there is no balance. We won't become the church that he has perfected. We'll become some screwed up Bill Bear kind of thing. You know? It's, it's just, you, you put whatever hand you want, you put whatever leg you want, but, but that, that's not sustaining, that's not, that's not the church of God. He will perfect his church, he will perfect his church. That's who Jesus is. And that's why at this moment, I believe the message he preached is so prevalent now, because God wants you to seek inside you, look inside you, look inside you, so you can go higher and seek after him, so you know, you know, who you are. You know who you are. And all the sins that you've ever done. You know what's actually a sin? He blessed other people with it. He gave back half of everything he had. He repented and he blessed the people with it. Ever since that day on, I believe Zacchaeus became a good tax collector. The most honest house collector, and everybody who loved to go through him. And he blessed other people with it. Praise the Lord. Can we just come together at this moment um, and just stand on our feet? And we're just gonna worship the Lord who's worthy of, of it all. And I, I, I want us to really look to ourselves and say, was is he worthy of it all? Or am I actually looking at other people to determine the worth of Jesus? The worth of Jesus is not by the crowd. It's not by how many people follow and believe in him. The worth of Jesus is indescribable. He is worthy of it all. And we will give him everything, everything.